Jay's Tunnel here. Today we're actually on the water. We're out in the boat and we're in Baffin Bay and we're looking for brown tide. So I've got, been getting a lot of calls about people saying, man, our water quality is looking a little brown. Is, is brown tide come back? Well, we're out here to see, see what's going on. And if you don't know about brown tide, uh, you will by the end of this video, because we're actually working with a team at the Heart Research Institute, where we're going out, they're doing sampling, uh, a lot of different types of water quality testing that they're doing here in Baffin Bay. And then we're gonna take stuff back and the samples back to the Heart Research Institute in the lab, and we're gonna talk to the experts about what's going on. So let's check it out. Today we're out in Baffin Bay and we're doing water samples looking for algal blooms that might uh, detriment the environment out here. So brown tide is an algal bloom that'll happen out here quite often that can impact the amount of light that goes through the water column and can actually hinder the growth of seagrasses in the area. Can't actually tell if there's brown tide in this right now, but we're gonna take this back to the lab and take a closer look at, at it. When we get a sample, we bring it back here to the lab and um, we do a couple of things with it. One is we take it uh, downstairs where we do a lot of filtering and collect part of the water and we measure how much nutrients are in the water. So things like nitrogen and phosphorus that the brown tide needs to grow. And then we also bring a sample up here and we look at it under the microscope where we can count how many brown tide and, and other types of, of phytoplankton are in the water. So in the field, once we get out to a station, uh, we'll take a whole bunch of different measurements. So we'll take some water samples that we'll take back here to analyze for brown tide, but at the same time we'll take water samples to look at the different environmental conditions that might be good or bad for brown tide, uh, like the nutrients and the organic matter in the water. And we'll also take the sonde, the, the, the YSI handheld instrument that we have out there, and we'll drop that down through the water and it has sensors that measure the salinity, the temperature, and the dissolved oxygen of the water. So that information is just part of kind of telling the story of why we do or do not have brown tide at any given time. So when we get, uh, when we get a sample and we see a lot of brown tide in there, uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll report it to Parks and Wildlife. We'll give Alex Nunez a call uh, with the Spills and Kills team just to kind of give him a heads up that, hey, we have this out there. And then we have a pretty good network of anglers and other folks who like to stay on top of things and just want to know what's going on. And so I'll usually shoot them an email or a text and just say, hey, we're seeing brown tide here or here. Um, what are you seeing when you're out there? So it helps us to kind of get more information about what's going on with brown tide. The good news is brown tide is not harmful to us, uh, unlike some other types of uh, algal blooms like red tide. Um, but brown tide is not great for the ecosystem as a whole, so it can uh, shade the seagrasses and lead to seagrass die off, which is bad for fish and other stuff. Uh, there's also some evidence that brown tide is just not good for the food web in general. It's basically like a like a, a, a big booger in the water. I mean, it, it literally is covered with this mucus layer. It's not going to be very good for the food web. Um, and aside from that, we are seeing more and more evidence that brown tide is just an indicator that the ecosystem is not as healthy as it could be. The good news with brown tide and just the overall water quality issues in Baffin Bay is that we're really starting to figure out what's causing them. And that's thanks to the support of a lot of our different partners like CCA and Selenies Corporation and others who've helped us fund the monitoring program. And so with that information now, we have the stakeholder group and the Bringing Back and Back initiative, which is addressing the pollution sources that are causing these water quality issues. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel here. It's gonna take a while to fix the problems, but we're getting there. Wow, okay, that was awesome. To be able to hear that uh, people are working on brown tide and that there's no impact to humans and that they're coming up with solutions to be able to fix the problem. Because I've been hearing about this stuff for decades, about brown tide. It's like, man, this is bad stuff. So it's good to hear from the experts about, you know, what they're doing about it. And hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. All right, I'm getting in my truck and I'm heading back to the beach. We'll see you on the next episode of Beachcombing. Bye.